In Frazier tonight, crews are on site still working around the clock to repair the sinkhole. Here is a look at what they were doing today, trying to get the bypass line finished for the real work to begin. And throughout this ordeal, two things have become clear. It's going to take a long time to fix. It's also going to be an expensive fix. So who pays for it? Let's get to Nick Monticelli. He's live in Frazier tonight. Nick, first off, update us on today's progress. Karen, good evening. The progress, as you mentioned, is moving along. These bypass lines are going in. Two additional pumps are now in. There will be three parallel pipes, a total of 6,000 feet. Once they get those lines in, then they can shut off the main line, dry it out, and then get inside to inspect it. But as you mentioned, their second problem is how are they going to pay for this? You cannot tell from a distance, but considerable amounts of progress are being made in Frazier. Two of the bypass pumps are now installed, part of the three parallel pipes that are going in to get around the break. One of the rising concerns, though, is how will the county pay for all of this? Public Works Commissioner Candace Miller and County Exec Mark Hackle talked to state leaders today. There's a possibility of some federal highway assistance, perhaps, for the road construction itself with the 15 mile road. Also, there is some good news on the horizon for the three families whose homes have been condemned. The county is considering writing a check and just buying them. That is a possibility uh, to extent that we can go. Uh, we're going to have conversations with those homeowners directly to figure out if that, if that is their interest. There's also now a theory about what may have caused all of this. This is the line, and back in 1970, it collapsed once before. During that time, they drilled several holes right through the sewer line to determine exactly where the break was. They found it was between here and here, but there were two additional holes that were left on either side of that break in 78. It was filled in with grout. However, those holes are right at the spot that it broke again in 2004 and in the spot that it happened again on Christmas Eve. An open hole would allow soil to get pulled in, washing it away, and then there is nothing supporting the pipe. If this is the case, I guess one thing you could say is we know how to fix it. Very insightful again if that theory proves to be true. Now again, how are they going to pay for this? They are talking to the governor's office. They are having conversations about what pots of money could be available with federal highway money, as you heard. But we do know that Macomb County taxpayers will be on the hook for this as well. They said they will definitely have to sell bonds and they will definitely have to raise the rates here in Macomb County, the water rates, to see if they can pay for this even in the short term because the bills for this are already coming in. We are live in Fraser, Nick Bonacelli, Local 4. We got a feel for those homeowners and lots of people asking questions in terms of how we got here. So, Nick, if the holes were drilled back in 1979, why were the problems not seen during all the inspections that they had to go under? That's something that we asked in today's press conference, and this line has always been an active line. So even once that bypass was created back in 1979, the holes on the other side of it were still being used in that section. So an inspection wouldn't see anything because there's about three feet of sludge, of mm. sewage running through there. So you wouldn't see something coming in. You wouldn't see those holes because it's covered by sewage. Mm, what a mess. All right. Thank you, Nick.